Something that our listeners, I don't think, ever get to hear us do is what we do when we come into the studio prior to turning the microphones on. And what we do is consecrate. We consecrate a lot of things as we engage them here at Ransomed Heart. We consecrate our building and we consecrate an event as we go into it and a message and the launch of a book or all kinds of things. But every time we step into the studio here, we consecrate. When we step in here, we consecrate and we pause and bring all things again under the rule of Jesus, equipment and the content and our hearts and lives. And we just kind of dedicate and consecrate, present everything except our cell phones. Well, we usually turn those off when we... Normally turn those off before the microphones. Before the consecration. Go on here. John, so that's just beautiful. Here, let me turn your phone off, John. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> just another day at Ransom hey, Heart. Take two. Oh, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> so welcome back to mm-hmm. a series that we're doing entitled New Frontiers, those threshold places, the new territory, taking new ground that Jesus is inviting all of us into in our lives, and I think particularly here at the start of a new year. So you're back with John and Craig. And the reason I bring up consecration, the reason that I'm describing what we do every time we walk into the studio is anytime you're stepping into a new frontier, one of the first things you're going to want to do, first thing we always do is consecrate it to God, like bring it under the realm and the rule and the kingdom of Jesus. You know, consecration matters. The scripture takes consecration super seriously. And anytime, you know, when the people are getting ready to take the promised land, it was consecrate yourselves. Joshua went through the camp and said, consecrate yourselves for the Lord is about to do mighty things. And that theme just you know continues on. You see it in the book of Acts when Paul is actually going on his first great missionary journey. It says that the church was fasting and praying and they consecrated Paul and his companions to the Lord. So really effective, really helpful. I bring this new – what is mm-hmm. it? You know, This new job, mm-hmm. this new opportunity. I bring this new creative enterprise, this new relationship. Right. That might be the new frontier, right. this new school year, you know, yeah. whatever it may be. We consecrate it. We present mm-hmm. it to Jesus. We bring it under his loving rule. What you're doing in that prayer and in that act of sort of worship and prayer is you're bringing all of the new frontier, this new thing, consecrate it, bring mm-hmm. it under the kingdom authority of Jesus so that his protection and his blessing can flow to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, John. I think that when it comes to frontiers, new ones, there's a distinction to be made in that some frontiers we choose ourselves. We may choose to accept a different job, to move to a different location, to scale down in our home. A whole variety of new frontiers that are shaped and created by our choices Then there's some new frontiers that come upon us, chosen for us, we fall into, or they... They're thrust upon us. That's a better word. (laughs) Because of other people's decisions, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Or world events. Yep. Yeah. That's good, Craig. In any frontier, whether it's thrust upon us or chosen, you know, I think... God can redeem and kind of turn whatever that frontier is around for his glory Mm -hmm. and his purposes, Mm -hmm. even the ones thrust upon us, which we chafe under the most, that we didn't choose it, that this isn't a frontier of our making. That's really good to name that. And I would say in either case, still consecrated. Yes. You know, whether it was something exciting that you have planned on, prayed over, and launched out, you know, or something thrust upon you, Mm -hmm. consecrate it. Bring it Mm -hmm. under the loving rule of Jesus and bring all the dimensions of it under Christ. And I think this next principle would apply to both as well, Craig. I think something we always do is ask God for advance words. We'll do it at the beginning of a new year. 
We'll ask God for words over the year, and we'll do it, you know, when going into a a missions trip. I do it when I'm writing a new book. Mm -hmm. Ask God for advance words, meaning speak into this, Lord. What are you saying? What are you doing? What are your promises over it? Because there's that incredible story in the Chronicles of Narnia in book six in the silver chair. Some of you might remember that Jill and Eustace are called out of our world to Narnia to find the lost prince. Prince Rillian has been taken prisoner, hostage by the witch, and he's north of Narnia in an underground kingdom. But early in the story, Aslan speaks to them, and he kind of gives them their mission, and then he gives them signs to follow. He said, here are the signs by which you will find the prince, and he gives them four signs. And then he has them repeat them over and over again until Mm -hmm. they say them right, and they say them in the right order, and they're up on the mountain with Aslan. Mm -hmm. There's just this beautiful passage where he says, once you get down in the land, and once you get into your journey, you will not hear me as clearly. And the signs will seem foggy to you. So memorize them. Say them to yourself when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night. Repeat them. Remember the signs is the urging there. And the reason that we ask for advanced words is because it's true. When you get down in it, you know, once you are well launched into this new frontier, man, you can, you can sure lose your perspective. Yeah. John, just another thought on the advanced words. I'm just thinking how many times a new frontier for ransomed heart has been because Christ has told us, go in this direction, Mm -hmm. not that direction. I'm thinking that, you know, one year Christ said, focus on resources. And that defined the year for us. And the new frontier was giving a lot of time, energy, and effort to resources or to go to Australia and thus begin doing things internationally. Yep. So I'm thinking of the person who says, you know, I'm not sure what new frontiers God may have for me. It's just simply a matter of asking God. Yes. Any new frontiers, any new direction? Yes. And he can open the door there. Yeah, exactly. And to have him speak into that and write those things down. I cannot (laughs) urge you enough to write them down the words, the signs, the advanced words that he speaks over it, promises, scriptures. You know, sometimes it's just words like, I'm with you. I'm in this. Sometimes you'll get very specific things. You're going to need forgiveness. I want you to walk in humility. Mm -hmm. You know, trust me in this Mm -hmm. and write those things down and come back to them often, just like Aslan urges the children, you must return to it often because it does get a little foggy once you get into the new frontier. And the enemy would love nothing more than to rush in with, did I make a wrong turn? Was God in this? You want to be able to look back and go, no, he spoke. Yes. We have this written. And speaking about the enemy Let me describe something really fascinating that we discovered. Actually, it was our friend Leslie who first showed it to us. In the hero cycle, there's something that Joseph Campbell wrote a book a number of years ago called Hero with a Thousand Faces. And what he was basically looking at was in all of the fairy tales, myths, legends, and all of the great even cinema and films, you know, across the decades and down through the ages, there is one basic story. And it's called the hero cycle. And you'll see it in Star Wars and Gladiator. You see it in The Hobbit. And there are these elements that are true. And one of the first elements is the hero is called up into a quest. That's what we're talking about. You know, so Luke Skywalker, his uncle and his aunt are slain and they lose the farm and he gets swept up into the fight, you know, for the galaxy, Mm -hmm. right? And Bilbo gets, you know in some ways, kind of snookered by Gandalf into this quest with a company of dwarves and suddenly finds himself swept up in the great battle for Middle Earth. So the step one is the hero gets swept up into something new. But this is very interesting. Campbell describes the threshold guardians. 
that almost in every great story, as soon as the hero does choose to step up, as soon as he, you know, decides, I'm going to go for it, some enemy, some event, something rears its head to try and stop him. Mm. And Campbell calls them the threshold guardians. And we found this to be very true. And this is especially true, gang, if what your new frontier is actually taking taking ground, yes. taking new ground in your life, you know, whether that's, my goodness, counseling or taking new ground in a marriage, taking back lost mm -hmm. ground, mm -hmm. maybe taking ground in your sexuality, mm -hmm. as well as you know, pursuing a dream, a calling, you're going to start finally now writing or you're finally going to start working with kids like you've always wanted to. Man, if you are taking new ground for the kingdom, heads up, just probably pretty likely that the enemy is going to rush in. And he tends to rush in early to see if he can get you to just bail, mm -hmm. right? Because once you're committed to it, once you've got a little bit of the story under your belt, mm -hmm. you know, it's harder to get you out of it. But in the early stages, these threshold guardians kind of rear up and heads up, it doesn't mean you're blowing it. Yes. Let me repeat, uh -huh. simply because things suddenly got difficult does not mean you made a mistake, that you didn't hear God or you took a wrong turn or he's not in it. Oh, actually, if opposition suddenly arises, take it as a confirmation you are on exactly the right path and deal with it as opposition, right? Don't dismiss this as, oh, it's a little bumpy, like... This is your enemy. You pray against it. You yes. bind the strong man, Jesus says, and you get to plunder his house. You bind the threshold guardian so that you can move in and take the land. Yeah. John, I'd even say that at some point for every growing believer, there will be a new frontier that involves taking new ground. I mean, the development of our gifts and our calling – Whatever our vocation, whatever we spend eight to five doing, is going to inevitably and ultimately involve some mission to take ground for the kingdom. And that will be opposed. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed, gang. And it doesn't mean you're blowing right. it. It doesn't mean back down. It means press through. Mm -hmm. One of the secrets of the universe is that God is growing us up. Your destiny and mine is to reign with Christ in the coming kingdom. And the way that he develops our character, our wisdom, our holiness, the way he shapes us for the future is the very process we're describing, mm -hmm. including the opposition, the setbacks. You know, I remember I took a job a number of years ago in Washington, D.C., and God was in it. God was in it. And we prayed a lot about it. And, you know, we had to leave our home and our families in Southern California and go to the East Coast. And I remember getting there and those horrible things that hit you in the middle of the night. I've made a dreadful mistake. Mm. Right. That kind of stuff. Yeah. You shall know them by their fruit. It's from hell. Yes. The fruit is despair. The fruit is regret, you know, scrambling, fight it, yeah. fight it. You literally, all the techniques that you learn in prayer of, we bring the cross of Christ against this. We bind this in the name of Jesus and declaring God's faithfulness over this move into the new land. Let me point out a couple other things that we've learned over the years as well. When we were off the air last time, Craig, you made a really insightful observation and you said that when we find ourselves in new frontiers, it often requires new tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think of the westward expansion and you've got folks and wagon trains coming west and their new frontier required whole new sets of skills, tools, abilities – and I think in the spiritual realm, that's true as well, that every new frontier is a call to something deeper, 
something new, something requires more of us in our journey as sons. And so, yeah, there's going to be new skills, gifts, talents, tools, battles, weapons required. Bingo. So don't feel bad because it feels like your old tools aren't working. Mm -hmm. Again, that doesn't mean you're blowing it. Right. That's just part of what it's like to be in new territory, learning to love in new ways, learning to engage your teenage children in new ways. Yeah, yes. some of the old tools you know, don't work. Well, this is your opportunity to grow. What do you need to read? Who do you need to listen to? Who's got some resources in this area? Might not be Ransom Hart. Might be somebody else. Yeah. Ask God, you know, where do I go, Lord, to learn some of the new things I need to handle this? One other thought there, John, is when we're making a transition from frontiers, so often, rather than just recognizing it's time for a new frontier, we seem to need, look for some kind of a conflict or tension or something to justify the move versus I'm in a season of my life where, you know, this has been great. I've got a new frontier. It just feels like recognize and, and move with God animosity, tensions, conflicts don't need to be the indicator that a new frontier is on the mm. brink. In fact, a friend of ours has just left their lifetime career. They've walked away from a company that they actually helped to found, and it was a pretty big transition. And they really found themselves lost in this in-between time. And through some conversation, you know, we just helped them to see, are you kidding? Look at this incredible gift from God. You have a sabbatical. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, you don't have to rush from the one thing into the next thing. Is God's given you this period in your life to regroup, reframe. My goodness. And what was absolutely fascinating was simply by naming it, they found a whole new freedom to live in it. Mm. And so this is another point, gang. Be very careful what you name things, mm. including this new period in your life or this new frontier. Be very careful what you name it. What I mean is oftentimes in our fear or frustration, you know, we'll say something like, this is going to be hell. Yeah. You do not want to name it that. You don't want to proclaim that over it, right? Yeah. Or this is just going to be really long and really hard. Yes. You don't know that. Yeah. You know, words like that over it. The immediate illustration is the new frontier for us as a family is our teenage children. And it's just almost a given that because we have teenagers, this is going to be, you know, five years of hell. Right. No. Not necessarily. Not at all. Not necessarily. Right. Don't name it that. Be right. very careful what you name it. You really do want to proclaim goodness and blessing. God has caught me. We've learned all this the hard way, gang. We're sharing our tips because we did it wrong the first several times. So many times God has caught me and said, John, call this good. Name it good. You know, it was as simple as some friends called for prayer last week. And it was late in the evening and I didn't want to go, you know, I didn't want to be a part of it. Going out the door and I'm, you know, and Jesus is like, John, this is good. Call this good. Like literally name this good right now. I call this change in my evening good, right? So just careful what you name this new frontier. I bless it. I thank God for it. I consecrate it. I ask him for advanced words. I'm prepared to Fight the threshold guardians. I'm asking him for the new tools. And I think the final secret, if we could give you, is allow for your transformation. Mm. God is growing us up, and he's using the new frontiers to do it. And this is the secret of all of the fairy tales. The children will not make it through the silver chair, and they will not find Rillian. They will not rescue the prince unless... They accept their own transformation, that mm. they let go those parts of their character that need letting go of, right? This is so, so crucial because what good is a new frontier if you get into it and emerge 
out of it on the other side and you're exactly the same person. You put it years ago, John, that whatever else God may be up to in our relationships and circumstances, we can be confident that one of the things he's up to is just fathering us. Mm. And I mean, it feels like that's what you're saying Mm -hmm. as well, Mm -hmm. is that whatever our interpretation or understanding of this new frontier is, God is at work for deep transformation. In you. Mm -hmm. He's at work in you. And to accept it, I mean, new frontiers, I mean, they're going to flush everything out of the bushes, right? (laughs) The fear, the anxiety, your control issues, your anger, you know, your hesitancy to speak up, you know, belief that you don't have anything to offer, all that. It's going to surface all of that. Well, there's, there's the gold. Like, go with it. Invite it. Accept your transformation. That's the secret of this, to grow up as Paul says, until we all attain maturity and the full measure of the stature of Christ. That's the secret. That's what he's after in any of these things. And so just wanted to give you all some hope and some direction and some hard-earned counsel Mm. as you step into the new frontiers that Jesus is inviting you into. Mm. Hope you've enjoyed the series on New Frontiers. This has been the Ransomed Heart Podcast with John Eldridge and Craig McConnell. And as always, we invite you, come to our website. All kinds of cool stuff going on. New resources there, new events that we're doing. And check out our blogs. We have something now on the website called Ransomed Heart TV. All kinds of new free video content. So come and walk with us at RansomedHeart.com.